So some of you may or may not know I've spent a considerable amount of time here at the university, but part of it was spent over in the College of Business. So I just recently transitioned over to nursing about 10 months ago. Um, but last fall, I had a student come to me and say, I didn't really receive a whole lot of scholarship dollars coming to UC. However, I was really convinced that this was a place that I needed to go. Um, what can I do to make myself more marketable for scholarships in the next go round? And so, um, in the College of Business, there are two um, very specific college scholarship programs. One, the Lunar Honors Plus program, um, which offers, I want to say, full tuition. And then the Collagic Business Scholars that also offers, I want to say, half tuition. And so, um, the student that I was working with was an African American male. Um, and I can't remember, I don't believe he had received a Turner Scholarship at that point. And primarily because of him being first generation, he had not applied to the university in time and so kind of missed some of those um, key deadlines that I think many times first generation students don't understand the implications of. And so what I said to him is this, and I said this to the entire group of students that I was working with, so the business fellows group. I said, if you came to the university and you did not receive a significant amount of financial aid, particularly in the realm of scholarships, you do have a second opportunity in the College of Business. And it is by making sure that by the end of the first semester you have a 3-6 or higher. I said 3-6 or higher, so that means you need to really work at this. This is not money that's going to be given to you, this is money you're going to earn. Um, and you need to make sure that you get involved with at least two to three organizations that look like this. Um, at least one university-wide organization, so it could be student government, it could be community service. I need you to also get into um, student groups and organizations that are in your college, so major specific. Um, and then I said, any program that is out there that's offered that can help you be a better student, or a better business major, you need to be there. And you need to meet as many people as you possibly can. So, this student took me at my word, and literally at the end of spring semester sent me an email. Now mind you, by spring, I was already in the college of nursing. So I had left. However, there's a small population of students that still seek me out. And I said to him, what's up, what's going on? And he said, I wanted to tell you thank you. And I said, okay, what did I do? And he said, remember that conversation we had back in September? I said, yeah, I challenged you to do the GPA and get involved. He said, well, this is what I did. I got involved in student government, and I actually now have a senator position. Um, I got involved in my major position, in my major, and now I also have a position there. And I also was recently awarded a Lunar Honors Plus Scholarship, which then takes him through the next three years of college, including the year in which he'll do co op. And I said, Good job. He said, Because so often people hear me, people listen to me, but don't hear me. I said, Thank you for just following through. I said, Because it's really possible for me to do these things if you just listen and follow the steps. So, it is possible for some of our students to make those shifts between not having scholarships and having scholarships. I don't have a specific example, but I think part of um, like the stories that people are sharing, what's so important is that students know, so I've, I've worked with everybody on this panel, um, students know that people on this panel are people that they can go to. And so how do you make yourself open and available so that students know you can be that person to come talk to? Sometimes we have people that come in our office who has nothing to do with um, necessarily what our office focuses on. So it has nothing to do with LGBTQ issues, but something is going on and they need somebody to talk to. And a lot of times they come to one of us because they know, okay, they may not have the answer, but they're going to help me or they're going to make sure that I get the help that they need. And I think that's part of what makes um, the folks on this panel such good advocates, that students know they have access to us, um, even though a lot of times we're trying to juggle a million and one things, that we will stop, that we will listen, 
Um, and I think the other thing is, on our end, that we challenge our students to make sure that they're doing their job. So, um, Doc said, you don't, you believe the student until you find out otherwise. So I agree with that. And I also say to the student, so what happened? Well, when that happened, did you think about this? Or what could you have done differently? So it's not just that we're listening to students and believing them, but that we're challenging them. Because sometimes they're not always in the right, or they don't make the best decisions. And somebody has to be there to make sure that they know, yes, we're going to fight for you, and you have a responsibility. And it's also something that's important. Yeah, I'll just add on to that. I think for me, the question around what is the positive, or can you think of a time when you had a positive outcome? That positive outcome can look so different, and sometimes it's just the conversation that you have with the student, or when you you know see them coming to a different level of self-awareness, and that so it might not be necessarily the thing that they come to you that they want to have accomplished, but that you see that there's like real growth there, and that that's really that is really powerful and positive. Yeah, that, remind, uh, that reminds me of an example. We had a student that used to come in our office and literally sit up under the table every time they were in our office. They would take their book bag, sit up under the table, do their work, eat their lunch, on the floor, in the corner, whatever. People would speak, they would say hi, but they didn't really engage that much. And we just let that happen. The positive outcome was they came back the following year they had the support of our office because they knew they could be in there. They're very outgoing now. They volunteer. They're like, hey, hey. Yes. Hey, no. hey, what's going on? And we're like, oh, <laughs> OK. They've never sat back up under the table again. But that's what they needed at that time. And we, you know, it wasn't like we were like, well, why are you, you know, just are you OK? Yes, it became a habit. But now the student is very engaged, and she knows that our center is a place she can come and get the kind of support you need. So I think that's like the outcomes look different. Yeah. Well, I want to share a positive outcome because <laughs> that's the other thing about positive outcomes. It kind of pisses you off, right? I mean, in our work. I mean, there was a student here. They were a star athlete. And depending on whether or not this committee decided that they were guilty or not guilty, would determine whether or not they would get to play, and to be honest with you, whether or not we would end up going to the tournament. So uh, I'm in the situation. Uh, the students accused of plagiarism. I mean, all the, all the decks seem stacked. I mean, you know, you got top, well-respected faculty members, and they're bringing their case in, and. So I'm going in, you know, with, with the student, like, you know, I'm the administrator who's in the car of the student, and I'm knowing that my presence is given some stability uh, or giving some support in going. I, 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 I mean, in other words, I knew I was probably being used, but I tried to stay with the fact that, uh, I, I really, I'm, I'm believing the student, I, I, I agree with what's going on. So we get in, the positive outcome is, student goes in, boom. They decide you didn't plagiarize, it was your work, you can play. The negative outcome is, I haven't heard a damn thing from him from this point. You know what Thank you. And so in our positive outcome, I mean, I'm just, in our work, let's be honest, it's not our pay, it's not our titles. In our work, it's really the issue of when a student comes to you and says, thank you for what you said. And here's what's interesting. That's not going to come right away sometimes. I remember a student come up to me and say, you know, when I was here, I couldn't stand you. Well, because he had graduated, I looked at him and said, I couldn't stand you either. <laughs> this, I mean, it's true, right in this building. But you have other students who will come to you and say, you know, when I was here, I didn't really appreciate what was going on, but, you know, what you said made a difference. And that's why I'm where I am now. So a lot of times in the experiences that we have, especially in these experiences where we help to deliver people, you know, it may not be right away when they say thank you. It might be down the road when this person comes back and says, you know, did I ever say thank you? And a lot of times, that's all we want. 
That's all we really want in the work that we do. That's what, in my opinion, great advocacy will do. Real advocacy will do. It will bring you a thank you. And that's, that's been the best thing in my job. When people say, well, why have you been here so long? Part of it is, in my experience, I met some of the most uh, 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 thankful students you could ever meet. You get attached to them. You can get, you can get attached to thankfulness, right? And so, I mean, 40 some years, I've been, I, I mean, I've met some really good people. And so, uh, I just think that that's important uh, that we do reach out the best we can, knowing a lot of times, even if we're being used, or even if we can't deliver, we're there for the student. So, that was at least one time. We did make the tournament, we did go one game in. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>